9.35 is the time right now. He's in Oceans Canada. Says it will now do a scientific review of the Annapolis tidal turbine's impact on fish populations. It's a decision that Fundy fisherman Darren Porter calls a big win. He's been warning for years about the mortality rates of fish because of the turbine. One former fishery scientist says that turbine absolutely kills a lot of fish. And Darren Porter joins me on the phone here this morning with more. Darren, good morning to you. How you doing, Rick? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty good, bud. Good. You've been at this now, what, since, well, 2012, if not earlier, and uh, at one time, nobody would listen to a word you said. Yeah, now they you... all thought, yeah, yeah, they all thought I was crazy and, and yeah. they just caught in trouble, which they, they now know isn't the case. Yeah, you, you stuck to your guns, Darren. Tell us more about this. Well, um, it's actually quite frustrating. Um, ever since uh, I was pretty excited about that review to come out, and then Dad's well and a few other scientists told me, like, you know, don't be so excited about this, right? This is just a procedure. If they want to do something, they'd be, they'd be making sure it didn't come back on now. And Nova Scotia Power intends to turn that back on any day. And I guess the issue with this is is that they do know what causes mortality. Um, they know what causes not just mortality. It's ongoing and chronic um, effects and, and death on populations. And they got numbers like the number they're going to come up with, it seems, is 18 to 22% on a single pass of, uh, like, say, shit, American Shed, um, you know, there's numbers up as high as 49% on a single pass. And this is a tidal turbine out in the estuary where there's multiple passes. This is not just small amounts of mortality here. So, you know, you have, uh, you have a federally constructed um, Department of Fisheries that knows this. You have a mayor that knows this. And you have laws in place where there's prohibitions against um, them killing fish that supports recreational, commercial, and aboriginal fisheries, whether that be food and social ceremonial or for sale. You have uh, First Nations down, say, Bear River, for example, it's always traditionally fished straight bass in that system, and they no longer can. Um, it completely, um, it took their uh, ability to exercise their rights away. You have, you know, another First Nation up the, the stream valley that's traditionally fished species up in the upper part of the river that no longer can. You have uh, hundreds of acres of clam beds destroyed. There's clamors down there that no longer can clam. So you've got, you know, and, and that's supposed to be the goal of um, DFO protection is to um, to, to uh, preserve and to sustain those fisheries right now, currently, um, not to preserve and sustain the mayor's profits. But, why, okay, why, why is DFO, why, why has it been so reluctant to at least look at what you're saying here? Well, I mean, first off, I think we embarrassed them. It wasn't the intention. Um, so when they come out in the paper, they they basically said we had no idea what you're talking about. And then a Chronicle Hill did an exceptional job of reporting, and uh, they caught them up, and now they do know. Because we even have emails from the premier to a mayor, from a mayor, from a citizen to premier, the province to a mayor, saying about these fish kills in 2016, for example. Those are all sent to DFO. They all know about this stuff. They get caught lying and it's an embarrassing situation. So I think that was their big mistake is we kind of embarrassed them. So they're, they're kind of, um, you know, uh, caught between a rock and a hard place. They don't want to look like they're not doing their job. Well, how confident are you that they'll actually do a, a, a thorough scientific review as they're promising? I was very confident at first until yesterday, probably. Why? What happened? What changed? I talked to too many people, and it's like, you know, this, if they were going to do their job, they wouldn't allow it to start, because as soon as it starts, it creates mortality. So it's breaking the Fisheries Act the second it starts, and to expand on that, it's actually not just DFO's fault. AMERA has the responsibility, or sorry, Nova Scotia Power has the responsibility to report this. They also, and they failed their responsibility to do so. Um, they have a prohibition against killing in Section 35.1, prohibition for serious harm, 38, duty to notify. Well, now we know for sure that they failed their duty to notify. And then we also know that they find that onerous. In the Standing Committee in 2016, they, they complained because it was it was too hard for them to, to uh, report these kills to DFO. Well, DFO can't do their job. So it's not all DFO's fault. Amera must take... Um, must take responsibility, and they must start looking at their 
um, there are statements on how they're supposed to be ecologically responsible. And now management can't deny that they didn't know, which maybe they didn't know. Maybe just the workers and the lower management that knew. Now the board of directors, um, I think Ray, Ray Ivan is even a board director. They can't even deny that they don't know anymore. Well, and you say that uh, this is a, this review, once it's complete, will prompt the minister. You don't think you'll have any choice but to either shut down the uh, turbine forever or find a way to keep it from killing fish. Is that possible? Can they find a way to keep it from killing fish? Well, they, they, they never could. And the way it's set up, I don't think it, it's not just about killing fish. It's actually um, it's about habitat destruction. The offsets that they'd have to do if the minister actually authorized that um, equal to or greater than, for the way we understand it, unless they change the Fisheries Act, which is quite possible, um, they would. It wouldn't be feasible. That produces too little electricity to be feasible to do the offset that would need to take place in order to um, authorize that. So we don't really understand why Amer just doesn't come out and say, "Oh, we made a mistake. Our upper management didn't really understand the situation." Let's just fix this mistake. You know, we we made it. DFO has admitted they made a mistake. We're doing a review now. Um, why doesn't Amera do the same thing? Mm. Uh, you pointed out uh, earlier that up to 49% uh, mortality rate on some passes uh, for some fish species. Boy, that's that's an awfully high rate. That that can't be yeah, good news for the fish one. population. Yeah, you know what? There's, there's people that question that one. So if you want to take the one that people um, agree on the most, it's 18 to 22 percent, which is still, if you're thinking about it, that's ex- that's so that's like that's worse odds than Russian roulette. Absolutely worse odds than there's six chambers in a revolver. That's worse odds, 22 percent. You know, mm. this is this is a this is a a monster. This machine. Well, again, uh, you know, you you were persistent, uh, uh, Darren, and you you kept at it, and now they've agreed and. Fisheries and Oceans uh, will do a scientific review, though dates and such, we don't have a whole lot of details yet, do we? No, no. And I think that what's going to happen is upper management and, and those which are power in America just got to say, listen, we're going to do the right thing here, and uh, we're, we're going to just uh, we're gonna fix our mistakes. We really, you know, maybe the upper management didn't understand. Maybe they will fix it. And I think that's what we because how else are they going to walk into a room and, and with consultation with First Nations and, and or the fishermen in the future and say, listen, we care about your ecosystem. And we have a, you know, they even said with the, the title project in the uh, force, they always said, if we, if it's proven that we cause um, population level effects, we will remove our turbine. Well, guess what? Mm-hmm. We've proven you, you create these effects in an Apple River. Why aren't you removing that one? And can we trust you if you don't remove that one to remove any ones you put in the Bay of Bundy? It's as simple as that, Rick. You mentioned Michael Dadswell. He's the former uh, Fisheries and Oceans scientist who uh, acknowledges that uh, this thing does kill a lot of fish. He studied fish mortality at the uh, turbine. He says that he's not real optimistic. He says, quote, it might result in something or it might just be a nice tech report for them to tuck away on a shelf somewhere. Yeah, I disagree with him at the time, but I'm starting to lean towards perhaps he's a little bit more ed- uh, um, educated or schooled than I am on how the world world really works. Um, the big thing is we got a good science DFO. His name is Jamie Gibson. Before he was uh, DFO, he actually did three or four, five studies for an Fisher Power on Annapolis. So they have a really good in-house scientist that's um, done some work. And Jamie's probably, arguably, the most brilliant scientist in the Maritimes. Um, he's absolutely brilliant, and he's an honest man. So at the end of the day, they have some good tools to work with. Um, they already know the answers. Um, you know, this is, uh, it's breaking the Fisheries Act. It's not authorized. Um, Maris failed his reporting, which really has like hundred was it, up to a million dollars in a first offense charge for not for failing to report. And they've already been proven to fail to report. Hmm. So where's these charges at? Yeah, they're going to charge a mayor, I doubt it. You know what I mean? But, you know, why not? What makes them, what makes them more special than a fisherman. So in the in the the goals of fisheries protection is to to uh, preserve our fisheries, whether it be Aboriginal, um, commercial, or recreational. It does not say preserve America, of course. So why are they not dealing with this that way? They don't have a problem charging the citizen if he catches too many smelts in a river 
or a person that um, goes out and digs clams that didn't realize it didn't open until March, or sorry, May, you know, some some civilians don't know the rules, right? So they got no problem charging these people. But what's what's their big problem with taking a mirror and, and doing the right thing? Well, perhaps we'll see uh, some charge or something come out of this uh, review that, uh, again, the uh, Department of Fisheries and Oceans uh, will do. And, uh, Darren, I appreciate your time here this morning. We'll keep in touch on this, and we'll talk some more about this in the coming weeks ahead. Yeah, and just the last thing, did you uh, you asked me a question last time we were on about the why the the, um, the first nation spoke up. Well, look at the Chronicle Herald. Chronicle Herald's an exceptional job reporting on this, and uh, Chief Mike Stack. I'm going to give a shout out to him for stepping up to the plate and saying how it was. He said, you know, you guys are uh, leaving, you know, leaving us to fight for the scraps. Why, Amira is working with, I think he said impunity, right? Yeah. You, you know, very respectful. Um, thank him very much for saying it. And I appreciate your time here as always. Uh, thanks, Darren. No problem. I right, take care. Darren Porter's his name. He's a Bay of Fundy area fisherman. And, uh, again, been a lone voice for years in regards to this uh, mortality of uh, fish at the uh, Fundy tidal uh, turbine uh, in the Annapolis Valley, uh, which has been operating since when? Uh, 1984. And no timetable, no time frame for this uh, review other than Fisheries and Oceans has commissioned a scientific review uh, that turbines impact on fish populations.